Well, good evening. Good to see everybody tonight. Um, don't forget married couples retreat. Uh, that starts tomorrow. Uh, for those of us going up, there'll be a quick meeting after service tonight. We'll just be kind of sitting over here real quick and just uh, give you some, an itinerary and then uh, some more information. But just know if you're going on the couples retreat, just meet me over here immediately after service. I'll wrap it up quick tonight. I know that everybody's itching to some or maybe get on the road tonight, but we'll... Uh, we got choir practice, but we'll um, get you out pretty early, and I know for the crowd who wants to get to Arnold's quick, too, so i got to take that into consideration. Uh, teachers are still needed for Wednesday night, uh, preschool and the nursery. First through fifth grade needs some volunteers for Sunday and Wednesday nights. Uh, spoke with Jay and Emily still uh, before service, uh, asked if that was still a need, and they said yes. Uh, they would love to have uh, four different couples, if they could, come and volunteer in their area. So if you're praying about that, let Jay and Emily know. Don't forget our financial peace will start March 2nd. Don't forget uh, the youth, our D now, will be March 24th through the 26th. That is a Friday through uh, Sunday. Uh, kids camp, you see the dates there. Youth camp, VBS we mentioned. Uh, so June and July, first part is going to be very busy. I had to do that because I think school in Pickens County starts back August 1st, so we've got a, got a short summer, so we're going to try to be jam-packed as, as we can, but just be in prayer for all those events. Uh, switching over to our prayer list, uh, lift up the family of, of David Carter, that is Terry and Deb's uh, son-in-law and, and Morgan's daddy, so just be in prayer for, for them during this time. Uh, lift up uh, Randy Carty, uh, got admitted to uh, hospital over in Greer today. Uh, they think it's uh, diverticulitis. I spoke with Miss Donna before service, and uh, probably going to keep him overnight. But she said, just pray, pray for him. Play, lift up Christine Smith. That is Raymond's sister. She's failed, so be lifting her up. Uh, lift up uh, Deacon Cook, uh, Ryan and Kristen's one-year-old little boy. He had um, an oral surgery done this morning. I went. By their house and got to see them this afternoon for a little bit and he was uh, running around asking me to open up his pear his pear pouch or whatever that fruit that applesauce looking stuff is you turn and 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 so he asked me to do that so he's uh, fine but they said the next three days is kind of it's kind of not critical but just uh, recovery time is about three days so be lifting him up lift up Sam Byram I know most of you guys I think he was a supply pastor here for a little bit, and Sam Byram actually led my ordination when I got ordained, so Sam's got a special place in my heart. Pray for him. Uh, he is recovering from surgery. I lift up Emily Stancil. Uh, that is Martha and MJ Stancil's granddaughter. Uh, uh, she has a brain tumor, so be in prayer for her. I lift up Eddie Campbell. That is Randy and Ann's son-in-law. I lift up Miss Sandra Owens. Uh, Bobby Bale, still recuperating from his knee surgery. Melissa Cole, uh, Aaron Whitmire, that young man who had the heart transplant uh, so pray and prayer for him last time I think I heard he was doing well lift up Miss Patsy Presley lift up Bella Grant Nancy Strickland uh, lift up Billy Whitlock and lift up brother Ken Gregory as well uh, Sonia Morgan's on your prayer list she's here tonight they diagnosed her with asthma and so that's the that's the good news you know and so uh, but uh, uh, we definitely still praying for her um, also, as we pray, lift up your church staff, your deacons, our leaders, um, local and federal. Um, I won't get too much on that speech I heard last night, but it wasn't too much of a speech, and I'll leave it at that. And so, uh, lift up all of our missionaries. Glad to have the Davis family here. They spoke during my first one or two months here, and they're glad to have them back with us tonight. Lift up the lost and complacent, especially our other sister churches, Elgin and Enon Baptist Church. Any other prayer requests and or praise reports? Ms. Faye? Justin called me this afternoon and uh, Derek Myers is in the hospital and he's got internal bleeding and he's not breathing good so I just want to, he used to come to church here so uh, everybody Pray for him. Warren. Uh, Pastor, I think sometime back, 
I had asked prayer for a very dear friend of mine, uh, Jim Wolf. Uh, I talked to him yesterday. His uh, prostate cancer is pretty bad. So please keep him in prayer. Thank you. Anybody else? If you would, please keep me in your prayers. I've got some additional tests that I've got to <coughs> done tomorrow and some ongoing doctor's visits. So, Anybody else? Tim? Y'all you, you remember my wife, Amy. She's not feeling too good tonight. My children, um, they are miserable. That makes me happy. It means God's answered my prayer. So uh, remember them, and uh, that they'll get more miserable. And because uh, this world has nothing to offer anyone. Amen. Just as a personal thing, you know, why is Tim the only one that sounds like Conway Tweedy when he starts talking to the microphone? Have y'all noticed that? You know, so I just want to switch and say hello, darling, or something like that. You know. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pastor gets off kilter sometime. I apologize. Anybody else? How about unspoken prayer requests? All over. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Lord, we love you. Lord, I just thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, I thank you for all that you do for us. And Lord, sometimes we think that, maybe thinking, what do you do for us? Lord, you, you gave us the air to breathe this morning. You got us out of bed. You got us able to go to a job, speak to somebody, minister to somebody. You got us up to where we could come back to church tonight. And, Lord, I just thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for all your many blessings. Lord, I lift up all those hurting tonight. You know the needs, medical, relational, physical, spiritual Lord, I just pray for those who've lost loved ones. I pray for Brother Randy Carty as he's in the hospital over in Greer tonight. Lord, touch his body. Give the doctors wisdom. Give him peace and comfort. Be with Miss Donna as she's with her husband. Lord, be with all those on our, on our prayer list. And it never gets mundane. Lord, we pray for this list. And I pray we take this list very seriously. And that we put it in our prayer closet we put on our refrigerator that way we we make copies of it we say hey i want to pray for that person today i want to pray for our homebound today i want to pray for our leaders today i want to pray for those other two churches today and lord i lift up brother sam i lift up miss christine smith i lift up little deacon cook who had surgery this morning but running around lord thank you for that thank you for that major surgery but everything major to you lord is minor and lord i just thank you for allowing us to come back to your house on wednesday night a time where other churches are just not coming back to church. They say, go spend time with your family. Go do something else. Well, Lord, we want to spend time with our church family. So this is spending time with family. And, Lord, I just pray for the preschool, the babies, the kids, the youth, young adults. I pray for this campus tonight. And I pray, is anybody riding by tonight? They start sensing the Holy Spirit is here. And I pray they just turn in, don't matter when, when the service is starting or ending. And they say, hey, I sense God here. Can somebody tell me about Jesus? And I pray this place has your fingerprint all over it. Bless the ones who are leading the worship and bless the message tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We'll take a look around and some people here and, and say to yourself, I love the Wednesday night crowd. Yes, sir. Don't you love them? Amen. So two words in the Bible that are very popular, people love, it's a transitional phrase. Do you guys know what it is? Two words, but, but God. It's one of our favorite terms. There is a lyric in a song that has the same effect for me, and it's just a few more weary days and then. Amen. You guys know that one? Amen. That's why I want to sing tonight because I, it's encouraged me since... I don't want to tell my age, but since I was born in 1873, and um, 
I just wanted to encourage you tonight, just a few more weary days and then. Amen? So stand and sing, sing with us. Just a few. Sorry, right, some glad morning. You want to start that way? I got right to it. I'm just so excited about singing that part. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I will fly away. You guys can have a seat. Thank you, guys. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We have been studying on Wednesday nights the things that Jesus does for us. And it talks about how he died for us and how he forgives us how he loves us and pastor didn't plan very well because the one about I was going to talk or do tonight about what Jesus does for us actually became my Easter sermon in Mark <laughs> and as you know we've been studying Mark on Sunday morning and so I didn't want you to hear it tonight and then hear it Easter Sunday so I had to backtrack real quick and uh, I didn't want to give you a double dose and some of you wouldn't even remember it if I did it tomorrow but, but we, uh, I didn't want to double dip, so I uh, started praying and looking, and so 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I realized what Sunday is. We're going to be back in, our, in Mark on, on Sunday morning, and we know men's night, Sunday night, Super Bowl Sunday night, and then next Wednesday night, we're going to start a, 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 a series probably in Jeremiah, and so I thought, well, I'm not going to get to speak on love. Tomorrow, some of us leave for the couples retreat, some of us uh, are, are going up there, and I'm going to really hammer down on, on couples, and we're going to talk with them in a few moments about an itinerary and kind of things they can do as couples. But I'm not going to give a Valentine's love sermon until tonight. And so that's where I kind of landed tonight and prayed about it. And so uh, we're going to see how this one does. It was kind of short notice, but, but I think God can still move. Amen? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of read probably the entire ch chapter 1 or chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, only 13 verses, so just bear with me. But I'm going to read this, we'll pr uh, I'll pray and we'll take off, okay? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. And let me say this, let me stop here. Substitute the word charity with love. I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains 
and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my gods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself and unseemly seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked, thinking, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. For charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there shall be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide of faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So today, real quick, I'm going to talk about love. Real simple. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. And Lord, I always start a prayer like that. Because we need to understand that we do love you. We don't tell you. We don't show it. Sometimes we may not even mean it. But Lord, we love you. And we should because you first loved us. And Lord, I just pray for again for tonight. I pray those who are hurting. And Lord, I pray tonight they just get a little touch of you. But we know a little touch in you is a big old touch. It's a heavenly touch that only you can provide. And I pray you'll just bless these next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen. Valentine's Day is observed in memory of St. Valentine, who was said to have been executed on February 14th in the year 470 A.D. for performing weddings for Roman soldiers. Maybe that's why he's called the patron saint of beloveds, and people around the world celebrate romantic love on the day of his execution. Now, the moment I said love and Valentine, I was expecting four of y'all to jump up and go to the Hallmark store real quick because you men don't keep up with the date thinking today was Valentine's Day. It's not. Today is the 8th. Sunday is the 12th. So Tuesday, we might have to tell Miss Kathy to send a thread out about 730 at morning. It's Valentine's Day, morons. Do something special for your wife. But often sermons preached on this subject are drawn to 1 Corinthians. Man, it's mentioned at every wedding. You can just recite it. And I've asked when the the weddings I've done, what scripture do you want? Man, they just start talking about 1 Corinthians chapter number 13 because all it is is love. But you know what? That, that phrase right there, all it is about love, that's really what our life should be about is love because God showed his love for us. God shows his love in many different ways. I said a prayer just a few minutes ago after I did the announcements in prayer time that God shows us love in many, many different ways ways the book of first corinthians was the first of two letters that paul sent to that church at corinth its purpose was to address several issues which plagued the church one of these issues (laughs) was divisions wow you know i think typical every southern baptist church could be the church at corinth because of divisions paul dedicated the entire 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians to emphasize the importance of love because the lack of it is the root cause of all divisions. The first thing we see is love is the rod for measuring spiritual maturity. We see that in verses 1 through 2. In our society, people often measure the value of a person by maybe an outward appearance, a position, maybe some wealth. One might say that doesn't happen in the church. Truth be told, it does. Have you ever asked someone to name a person he or she thinks is likely to be a spiritually mature person? And there's a good chance they'll point to a person who has one or more gifts and let's say of the Spirit. You know, I don't condemn spiritual gifts whatsoever. I believe in them myself. The point of it's wrong and unbiblical to say someone is mature because he has the gifts of the Spirit. Even if one has all the gifts but no love, we really can't call him a mature believer because you're not using them properly. 
You're not showing love to your fellow man. The Christians in Corinth had the gift of, uh, of different things, and they, they did it very much. But Paul compared them to spiritual babies because they did not love one another. How many of you have ever gone to somebody, maybe even in this church, you know, I love them because God commands me to, but I don't really like them. You ever thought that? Well, it got quiet here on the Wednesday night. Y'all the cream of the crop, folks. Y'all the ones that go get them, pastor, go get them. Folks, we have to show love to one another. Even in disagreements, we have to show love. I fail. You're like, Pastor, you do that? Fail every time. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a time where, and it happened much, me and that one right there, we've argued over the past 21 years of marriage, you know. And I'm, I'm not talking to Terry, I'm talking to Chrissy behind her, <laughs> you know, for you, for you visitors wondering. But I can tell, you guys, you know. You know, don't you? Hey, honey, you Okay. Mm-hmm. And they biting that lip or that tongue. And they could chew a 20 penny nail in half. Baby, are you, you sure you're okay? Yeah. I'm fine. And that that F and that fine is just, man, it is like ground into powder. So here's what I do. I go in there and clean the kitchen. She may have already cleaned it. I just start wiping down the counter because I don't want to look at her because she's not fine. There's something wrong. And I don't want to go in the living room or the bedroom. So I'll start, I'll, I'll, I'll start loading the dishes. And she's like, I just unloaded. There's, there's nothing to be done. I'm loading it anyway. I'm taking them out of the cabinet and putting them in the dishwasher. But our root of our relationship with my wife is rooted in love. The negative and the positive are going to happen. Listen, tomorrow, I know what's going to happen. We're leaving for Tennessee. And y'all, y'all been on the t- couple of streets before, haven't you, Davis's? With Rock Springs? Yeah. It's a fun trip. It's a getaway. But listen, we're not going to be past Traveler's Rest before she's already telling me how to drive. We're on 25 at the Sphinx and the Dunkin' Donuts. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. If y'all going and you see my truck put off to the side, you realize I've just pulled off, got out. I'm not doing a Chinese fire drill. I've got out and gone in the passenger side and say, here, you drive us to Pigeon Forge. <laughs> she knows it's going to happen. Rooted in love, though. Disagreements. Going to happen. Arguments may come. But how we react and how do we let it not fester? Because that festering leads to the devil's playground. I could get mad at her for a dozen things. She could get mad at me for a hundred thousand things. But we don't let it fester. I've learned. Don't let it fester. Get it out. Talk about it. And move on. That is spiritual maturity, folks. Don't let anything fester. With a brother or sister in Christ. Also, the fruit of the Spirit is the outward sign of spiritual maturity, and love is the main fruit. These indicate spiritual gifts, are, but just a loving behavior. If a so called child of God doesn't have love, it really means they're spiritually immature. Fortunately, we don't have to produce this, this fruit on our own, we just need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit by doing God's will. And when we do the Spirit, Himself will produce the fruit within us. See, we have the mindset that we just generate everything on our own. And there's a whole other sermon topic on that. Folks, we don't. We are fueled by the Holy Spirit. Without love, no one will inherit the eternal life. We see that in chapter, at verse 3. Paul's not saying self-sacrifice or anything like that. He's saying it's useless if not driven by love. The New English translation, I'll just use this, says it, it, which makes the text much more understand. It says, if I give everything I own, if I give over my body in order to boast, I don't have love. I receive no benefit. Folks, if you're sacrificing 
to let people know you're sacrificing, the best thing you can do is not sacrifice. You've heard the comment, man, they will give you the shirt off their back, but they're going to let you know it too. You know what the best thing to do right there? Don't give nobody your shirt off your back. Because if you're going to boast about it, you're not doing it in love. You're doing it in self-promotion. Paul says such self-centered sacrifices are of no benefit. There could, should be no, some benefit to us when our sacrifice truly concerns other persons' welfare. What's the reward? We can find that answer in Luke chapter 10. One must love God with all he or she is as his neighbor or love his neighbor as himself. But we can't inherit the kingdom of God if we hate our neighbor because hating the neighbor is the same as hating God. And hating our neighbor is the same as murder. I've never committed murder. Extremely dislike somebody. Talked about somebody. Murder. In the eyes of God. Folks, we can't inherit a life unless we devote ourselves to God. And it's backed by brotherly love because love is the outer manifestation of our inner righteousness. We show love. I was having a conversation with Lisa yesterday at the office talking about people just, I've said it before, who you tell to go and they don't throw your hand up to tell you thank you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I've said it before. Every car should come with a paintball gun so you can paint their windshield real quick. Just pow, 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 pow. Just pink. That way everybody knows they were rude and ungrateful. I don't think Ford or Toyota is going to do that. Do you? But we just talked about that and just talked about how we live in a society, man, it's self-promotion. I'll say it. I'll go there. I, I love NBA. Man, I, I love the NBA. And I saw where LeBron passed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for all-time points leader in the NBA last night. They lost the game, by the way. The Lakers did. They interviewed him after the game and said, hey, I'm going out to party tonight. Folks, you don't think we live in a day of self-promotion? Yeah, it's a great achievement. He's a future Hall of Famer. There's no doubt. He's a good player. I grew up in the Jordan era, so and Larry Bird, so that's, that's where my allegiance goes to. But he's a great player. But at the end of the day, folks, it's a team. And his brother's were let down last night, but he promoted himself as the greatest of all time. When your team lost, that's the world we live in, folks. It's about self-promotion. Look what I did. Look what I did. Look what I did. Not look what we did. How about look what God did? Look what God did in my life. God gave me the ability to play basketball. I love to thank God. Listen, I, I think it's funny. I think it's funny is about is like, is like drowning on a cruise ship funny because the reason I think drowning on a cruise ship is funny is because you got all that water out in the middle of nowhere and you drown on a cruise ship pool, okay? That's funny. I don't care if you laugh or not. That's funny. But I'll say this. When boxers thank God for knocking their opponent unconscious, that just tickles me to death. You know, that they th and I, I appreciate them thanking God for giving them the power and the will and the strength to knock their opponent unconscious. But that's true, folks. But w listen, we need to have kind of that same mindset. It's comical, yes, of thanking God when he blesses us in something that we don't have control over. What are you talking about, Pastor? How about waking up? We have no control over that. We have no control of our hearts right now. Randy Carty's in the hospital. No control. So, folks, we have a lot to thank God about in our life. And love is the noblest of sacrifices we can offer. Paul's talking about the, that agape love. It's different from the other ones. It's a, it, it's, it, Paul showed us what love is like. It's patient. It's kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud, it's not rude, it's not selfish, it's slow to anger. Keeps no records of wrongs, does rejoice, does not rejoice in evil, 
rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Folks, that's God. So when we love, we show in Christ's love. That's the kind of love he showed. He showed us. Even when we were unlovable, he still was showing us love. And that list can be overwhelming. And that agape love is not really spontaneous. It's not love at first sight. It was not cheap. We have to make an effort. But we're not alone because Christ gives us grace and the ability to love others even when we feel inadequate. We still can love others and show God's love. We may not feel like it. We may not like it. We may not want to. You know, the Bible says love your enemies. How many times have you known in the Southern Baptist Church somebody talk about somebody? I mean, that happens all the time. But you find out somebody talked about you in their church. What if you just made them a cake? And took it to their house and said, hey, Miss Carolyn got tickled about that, didn't she? And just said, hey, I, you've been on my mind. Not how it's been on your mind, but you've been on my mind, and I just want to give you this. That's not really what we do, though, is it? We like to, our flesh gets in the way, and we start, we start, Festering that sore more and more. And now the devil just poops, makes an appearance because his plan is now activated and now in motion. And now you have division between two people. Love is the greatest of all eternal virtues. Love will never become obsolete or invalid. Even though the world's trying to get rid of love or tell you it's okay to love this group and we can't love this group. You know, what I mean by that is, I don't know, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody with kids watching the Grammys. I, don't, I didn't really want to watch what I saw. And I turned it off when I, really, when I noticed what was going on. But folks, we, we, we live in a world where it's, it's okay to, and they can say they didn't mean it. But there's red, there's horns, and there's cages, and there's weird stuff going on. That's Satan. They could talk about that all they want to. That it wasn't. It was just a performance. That had Satan's fingerprint all over it. Confirmed homosexual and a confirmed transgender. Correct? Is who performed that? But a traditional man and woman marriage. Oh, well, that's... You're ignorant. That's not what... That's not what... Truly, God intended that we can love just anybody. And listen, we've got to be careful who we listen to, too. How about two pastors, prominent church in California, said if homosexuals get right, I'll go down this rabbit trail a minute, go, gets right, now they get married, okay, and they get right, does God want them to divorce? Because they don't think it's a, they think it's a gray area because God hates divorce. He hates homosexuality, too. So how about that marriage, if you will, I'll do air quotes. I'll, I'll bring it in like a 747 quotes, okay? That marriage, in God's eyes, is null and void. I don't care what you state, what you county, who said it. That marriage is now null and void. That wasn't even in my mind. Somebody needed that night. Then it talks about how we, we grow and how it references a child about three or four years old. Certain behavior was appropriate for his age, but that behavior ceased once the child grew up. Likewise, our spiritual gifts are appropriate for our age, but they will cease when Christ returns. I mean, can you imagine my 17-year-old son, Deacon, walking by, and I say, Deacon, come on, grab your brother, let's go. And he just flops down wailing and starts pitching fit crying at 17. At three, sure, proper behavior. But 17, not so much. Same with our spiritual growth. If you're new to Christ and something happens, yes, you can react in a certain way. And we all fail. I'm not going to stand here and say we're not perfect. We all fail, okay? 
But at a certain point in time, our spiritual maturity should start taking hold and start taking place. Well, we realize Satan's at work. And it's not, our battle is not with flesh. Our battle is with against Satan himself. And our battle is the Lord's. And so that's what, that, that's the spiritual maturity. And we're going to get mad. We're going to get mad at stuff. But no, it's probably the devil that's created that idea or the reason why you got mad. Talks about a reflection. How do we see ourselves? As loving? How does God see us? How does your spouse see you? One's going on the trip will get a good indication of how we're supposed to treat each other. And tips. Some of y'all have been married 50 years. Some may have been married five months. I don't know. But we can all grow every day. You know? You guys have been married 50 years. Man, I'm, we're not even halfway there. We're just, in May, we'll be 21 years. And you're like, man, y'all got a lot to learn. And we still do. Kind of like our spiritual maturity. We have a lot to learn. We still growing. We still going. And folks, if you're still breathing and you're still ticking on this earth, God's not done with you yet. He still has a plan for you. It may be a daily plan. It may be an hourly plan. plan or it may be a long-term plan. But God still has something for you to do. And you still can be useful to God. So how does conduct measure up to Paul's description of love in our dealing with others? Whether they be friends or foes, without love, all that work means nothing. So are you committed in walking in love? Are you committed in walking like Jesus? I did a count one time when I taught Sunday school at my previous church of how many songs over the years were written about love or had the word love in them. I know the number. You know how many? 14,150 songs at least have the word love in the title or in the verses. You're like, I didn't know there was 14,000 songs. I didn't either. But love is important. Love is the word that describes Jesus. But does it describe you and does it describe me? Let's pray. Lord, we love you. Lord, thank you for this night. Lord, I thank you for this time as always. Lord, I just pray that we show others the love of Christ. And Lord, it's tough when they don't show it back to us. We want to get in the flesh and we want to bless them out. But Lord, I pray that we look at everybody like you look at them. And that's with love. That's with heavenly eyes. They see what they could be. That you see what they could be. I pray, Lord, we view everybody that way. And yes, we're going to get agitated. The devil's going to play, play on that. We're going to get, but Lord, I pray that we all look at each other with a heavenly mindset. And Lord, I just pray that in the days ahead, weeks, months, years ahead, that liberty knows that Eastside loves them. And Lord, I pray visitors know that they love them. The east side loves them. As I talked with that couple this afternoon, Lord, that young couple who had that young boy have surgery, they said one thing that drove them here was how sweet and loving everybody was. Lord, I pray that never changes. Whether we grow or stay the same, I pray that sweet spirit never changes. And Lord, I just pray we love each other. In a day where we want to self-promote, we won't talk about what I did. We won't talk about what, what I've done. How about we talk, talk about what God's done? And Lord, I just pray for our society, for our nation. That doesn't show love, no matter what was said last night. And that we redefine love. But we redefine on how you originally defined it. Man and woman. And that's it. And Lord, this ain't a sermon about that, but Lord, I pray that we've twisted the word love so much 
that we're numb to. We don't even really truly know what it means. But, Lord, I pray if we look to you, we get a real good glimpse of what love means. And, Lord, I just thank you for this service tonight. Lord, I thank you for all those preparing for Sunday. Pray for those going up the mountain tomorrow and back down Saturday. Lord, I pray they get a good refreshing time away. Give them traveling mercies to and from. Be with those hurting tonight. And days ahead, Lord, I pray we get bold with our faith. As we gear up for our outreach program in March, I pray we get excited about what you're doing. And I pray we get excited about showing your love to a lost and dying world. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying on the cross. In your precious heaven name I pray. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, you guys going on the couple's treat, just meet me right over here real quick. I